Would you bow your heads and let us pray? Lord Jesus, as we reflect on your word, give us ears to hear, for you are a God who speaks. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please sit down. We serve a, a speaking God who spoke the universe into being, who spoke his word and gave laws to the Israelites, who sent Jesus as the word of God into our world. But he's not only a God who speaks, he's also a God who listens and a God who hears. And sometimes the, the challenge we face is that we need to be listening and hearing as well. And too often, we don't. Sometimes we're a little hard of hearing. Like the story of the, the man who bumps into his friend one day, a slightly older man, and they start talking and doing a bit of catch-up. And... Uh, as they're talking about families, the man says, I'm a little concerned about my wife. I think she's going deaf. And his friend says, well, it's, it's given our age, it's, it's one of those things one expects. There's lots that can be done about it. She just needs to go and, and be tested and get help. And he says, well, she's a little bit sensitive, so I can't just go and tell her this because it'll create a, a, a fuss. So... Um, I'm not sure what to do. I wish I had some objective measure I could use. And his friend says to him, well, well, what you need to do is you need to go and speak to her from a distance and see if she hears you. And if she can't hear you, then move a little bit closer and a bit closer until the point that she can hear you. And then you can use that as an indication of what her hearing level is like. But you've got to remember to speak with the same level of voice. You don't want your voice to get louder and softer because that, that will change things. The man thinks, well, that, that's doable. That's a good idea. And he gets home that, that evening and his wife's busy preparing supper in the kitchen. And he thinks, this is the, the perfect opportunity because she's facing that way, busy chopping the vegetables, and he comes in behind her. And so from across the kitchen, he says to her, what's for supper, dear? And she just carries on chopping the vegetables, chopping, chopping. And he goes, okay. And he takes two, two, two paces forward. So that he's that bit closer, about a meter closer. And he says again, what's for supper, dear? Making sure he's keeping his voice at the same level. Nothing. Chop, 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 chop. And he goes... It looks like it's worse than I thought it was. So he takes another two paces forward, so he's quite a bit closer, and he tries again. And he says, what's for supper, dear? She looks up and says, for the third time, I said it's soup. <laughs> Bernice thought that was a lot funnier than I thought it was, but... <laughs> We sometimes don't hear. We sometimes mishear. We sometimes don't listen. But God always hears when we speak. And God will often come to us in the impossibles that we face. And in the story in the gospel, we had two impossible situations. Jairus, his daughter, was dying. Now, it's unlikely that he just watched her and did nothing. And then, oh, I'll go and ask Jesus. Clearly, as a concerned, loving father, he'd done everything he could. As a leader of the synagogue, he was resourced to be able to do more than most people, probably. He probably called in the best minds and the best advice and had done everything he could, and it hadn't helped, and she was dying. We told quite clearly that the woman in the story had been sick for 12 years 
and she'd been under the care of many doctors, and it hadn't helped. It only got worse. So she was struggling, and despite everything she had done, she had gotten no better. And for both of them, they'd done what they could, and there was no hope. There was no alternative for their situation. And therefore, they come to Jesus. We're told that Jairus, the this, this synagogue leader, comes in, and here's somebody that was, had a position of authority in the town. He had a position where no doubt others listened to him as a synagogue leader. He would speak and give directions and people would listen and do and respond. That was his experience. But he comes to Jesus to plead. And we're told he falls at Jesus' feet and pleads earnestly with him. He comes begging for help imploring Jesus to come and change the situation. The woman, as she comes to Jesus, she doesn't say anything. We're told in the scriptures that because she thought, if I do this, it will help. She believed and she had it in her mind to reach out and find the help that no one else could give. And both of them were, were heard by Jesus. And both of them had Jesus respond. And as we come to baptize Ethan later, there was much prayer. And he is a big child now. When I first saw him in the hospital, he was teeny. And it was touch and go. And the prayers were, were heartfelt and consistent and constant that God would hear us. And God did. And Ethan's here for baptism today. And sometimes we face challenges from God and it's not what we expect. So let me see, if we've got a, one of the children smaller than this, so we're not going ages. I need your help. Somebody, is there a child that'll come and help me? Ah, fantastic. We have two. Well, that, two minds are better than one. Are you big enough to use scissors? Yes, okay. We were horrified when my son, firstborn, went to school and the teacher suggested he should cut out more. We thought, he's too small to use scissors, but we were wrong. <laughs> Can you cut a hole in this paper that will be big enough for you to climb through? Do you think you can cut a hole big enough for you to climb through this? Hey? Do you want to try? I'm not sure you'll get... Do you, think you'll, do you think you'll make a hole big enough to climb through? Okay. <laughs> Confident? A little bit of concentration. Can you fit through that hole? Your head can go, but your shoulders... Uh, don't think... Do you think one of the adults will be able to do it? Okay, pick an adult to come and help me here. <laughs> okay. Any... any any adult to volunteer to come and cut the piece of paper, cut a hole in that you can climb through. Sometimes we go, come to God with our problems and we, we have a, an idea of what the solution is and what it should look like and how it might work. And sometimes God doesn't do 
what we think. God doesn't work in the ways that we think he should work. And he does things completely differently. So, am I cutting a hole in the paper? No. No, it doesn't look like it, no. <laughs> Now that I'm almost done, does it not, well, you can't see it's behind the desk here. I'll hold it up in a minute. Now does it look like I've got a hole in the paper? Mm. Always be prepared for things to go completely wrong. And then, if we do, where's, where's my helpers? Come. Is that a hole you could get through? There you go. Do you want to go through it as well? Jairus came to Jesus and he had a very clear idea in his head of what needed to happen. And he pleaded with Jesus, come and lay your hands on my daughter and make her well. Now whether he'd seen Jesus do that before, we don't know, but it's quite possible that he had. But in his mind, this is what Jesus would do. And Jesus comes. And they go along. And then Jesus stops. And in the midst of this crowd of people crushing in and pushing and shoving and trying to get through the marketplace or wherever, Jesus stops and says, somebody touched me. The most ridiculous comment anybody had made at that point. Everybody was touching him. And Jairus stops and thinks, well, okay, let's go. My daughter's sick. And Jesus stands. And he looks around and says, no, somebody touched me. Who was it? And he waits. And everybody's looking and the, the disciples come and say, what are you talking about? Everybody's touching you. Uh, this is... And Jesus waits. And finally, this woman comes out of the crowd and says, yes, it was me. And then she starts talking. We won't go any deeper into the woman talking, but she starts t telling her story. And it took us about 40 seconds to read. It probably took her a lot, lot longer to say what had happened and where she'd been and what the doctors had done and how she'd suffered and what she'd thought and how she'd come up to Jesus. And she's busy telling her story and Jairus is waiting. And Jesus doesn't come. And Jesus talks with this woman. And Jairus is thinking, I've got more important things. This woman's healed. It's all been done. She's fine. Stop. Let's go. And Jesus talks. Until finally, the friends come and say, too late. Jesus hadn't done what Jairus thought he would. The woman, too, we told she thought if she came up behind Jesus and just touched his cloak, she would be healed. And she did that. And she was healed. And then there was a commotion. And Jesus stops and he waits and eventually forces her to reveal herself and to come out in front of everybody. She thought she could just sneak in quietly, touch him and disappear and get home and and be well. But Jesus didn't let that happen. He forced her to come and to stand in front of everybody and spoke and got her story and talked about it and 
that was not what she was wanting. And what happened was that Jesus went with Jairus and performed the greater miracle. And how much more precious must it have been for Jairus and his wife that his daughter, daughter hadn't just been sick and made well, because that does happen. But that she had received her back from the dead. The woman, too, found that because of what Jesus did, she got more than she had wanted or asked for. She'd wanted physical healing. And Jesus had given that to her. But in bringing her out in front of the crowd, that crowd that had ostracized her and knew that she was unclean and had avoided her and wouldn't want to touch her, wouldn't go to her home, would chase her if, if she came anywhere near the synagogue, in front of all those people, he showed that she was clean. She got physical healing and she got social restoration as well. Jesus did more. Not what she wanted, but more. And Jesus doesn't always answer our prayers the way we think he should. He doesn't always do what we think he ought to do. But he does hear us. He always hears us. And he does answer. He always answers, sometimes in ways we don't expect. We have an idea that we'll take a piece of paper and cut a hole in it, and he does something completely different. And what then, when Jesus has heard us? It's where the first reading comes in. Paul speaking to the Corinthians and saying, Jesus has done everything. He became poor for our sakes that we might become rich. And then he encourages them, share your riches with other people. This is my judgment. You had the desire to do good, bring it to fulfillment. May your eager willingness be matched by your completion of it according to your means. And Jesus, if we continue reading, Paul says, the willingness is there. The gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. And we call to give according to what we have. And for us, that might mean giving financially. That might mean that we give in other ways, in service. Jesus calls us to be his witnesses in the world. Jesus calls us to be the salt and the light of the world. Jesus calls us to love our enemies. Jesus calls us to take what we've received into the world as a blessing. And he says, take what you have. And each one will have something different. And our finances are different and we give from what we have. Our ability to engage with people is different and we give from what we have. And it's important that we give what we have because sometimes... We stop and we think, when I have a little bit more, I'd like to give, but I haven't got enough. So when I've got enough, then I will give. And inevitably, we don't, because we never actually have enough. God wants me to go and share the good news. Well, I think I will do an evangelism course, and then I think I will go on a public speaking course, and then I'm not sure that I've got it right, so I'll, I'll go and read up a bit more so I can make sure I've got all the information I need so that I can give. And Paul says, no, from what you've got, now give. And as we come to the baptism, we're bringing a baby at the start of life, saying, we've received, we want the baby to receive. We want young Ethan to grow up trusting. And we come knowing that God hears us and God does answer. Amen.